my friends welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris today I will explain a little bit more about grounds um, grounds you can also call this uh, terrain it's the property of every 8x8 square of the map so every one of these uh, small square here can be either traversable by the hero or it can be a wall or there are also some other cases uh, so you can check that in your tile set you can edit your tile set by clicking this icon here or open any tile set from the quest tree here so this one is ocean set outside and you can see here all of your tile patterns and if you right click one of them you can see its ground property so there are a lot of possible grounds the most common are traversable and wall but there are also some uh, other grounds and we are going to uh, give more information about that in this tutorial um, okay so how does this how does it work uh, here this big grass tile here is uh, traversable it's actually this one is traversable um, if you change it to wall obviously you will have big problems okay I'm already stuck <laughs> that's really not what we want so let's undo okay now it's traversable again perfect um, yeah, so you can set it to traversable or wall or other things. And uh, the thing is, you know, ties can overlap. So actually, we here we have a wall, and below the wall we have this piece of grass, and even behind it we we have uh, some more grass. Uh, so different um, tiles that are stacked together, and the rule is simple it's the one uh, which is most in front that defines the ground of every eight by eight eight by eight square so that's why this part here, here is really a wall and cannot be traversed even though something is traversable uh, below it okay if if we put the this this tile to the front obviously uh, it will be traversable even though this time there is a wall actually behind so the highest one wins and all of this is on the same layer okay we are only talking about tiles on on this layer one here um, if you if you've seen the previous tutorial you know that there is actually another layer below but here it doesn't matter uh, same thing here actually this entrance here is traversable uh, that's why we can actually touch this teletransporter even if in reality behind this traversable uh, dark tile there is a wall and even behind it there is grass but uh, yeah. again the highest one wins um, now there are some other types uh, of grounds like I was saying during this introduction one that we already have a lot in this map is uh, shallow water here there is both uh, shallow water and deep water Actually, originally this map has deep water uh, everywhere, but uh, for this tutorial I replaced it by shallow water so that we can test um, because we would just drown in deep water. And we haven't seen yet how to uh, give the ability to swim to your player. Even though it's easy, we'll see that later. And yeah, so here. Uh, there is a built-in effect of shallow water is that we have this animation uh, 
Yeah, this little wave below the hero and some sound that is played when when we are moving, when we are walking in, in shallow water. Additionally, the speed, the walking speed of the hero is a little bit reduced. Same on um, this ladder here. There is a ground called uh, ladder. It's called ladder, but it's its only effect is really to just slow down the the working speed of the hero. Um, I can't find it anymore. It's here. Okay, ladder. Um, here we additionally had this stairs animation and sound because we put a stairs entity to handle the change of layer, but this tile here, when it has the ladder ground, its only effect is really to just reduce the speed of the hero. And if we continue, uh, my game is still playing, we also have some holes here. So this map is actually a great example. And when I get close to them, I am getting attracted. And I can try to resist, but if I fail, I, I will just fall. So this is very... These holes are very similar to Link to the Past. Oh, I found a glitch. We can actually avoid them. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, okay. Um... Yeah, if you want something more customizable than this this kind of holes that attract the hero uh, or shallow water that shows this animation, I mean you can customize the animation, but you cannot really customize uh, the the movement of holes, for example, or the or the speed uh, that is changed when the hero walks on shallow water or ladders. So, if you want more customization, probably you will not use uh, this simple feature of grounds, of built-in grounds, but you will have to do some custom scripts instead. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit more advanced, so we obviously will not see that today. But with, with Lua scripting, almost everything is always doable. Uh, okay, then we have, we have uh, one interesting thing. Thing is the low low wall uh, type of ground. So, for example, these ones are uh, just walls, and we use them here, which means that nothing can traverse them. Uh, obviously, I cannot traverse, but if I try to throw a bush. The bush is also stopped like a real wall because we defined it as a, as a wall, right? But um, if you define these as low wall instead, it will be a little bit more interesting. It will mean that the hero or enemies uh, still cannot traverse, but projectiles will be able to, to traverse. So here, my bush, I can actually throw it uh, above the, the bridge. So that's really cool. Low walls are, are quite useful in some cases. So yeah, it's basically your job to, to customize your tile set according to your needs. You can also decide that you want all of these to be low walls if you want to be able to throw bushes above uh, it's your choice really same in indoor tile sets uh, these little barriers here are actually uh, also low walls I think yes low wall all of these you also have holes in this tile set if you want Okay, uh, something else that can be interesting is diagonal walls because we have an eight direction system and sometimes you have you need some diagonal walls like this
So diagonal walls mean that the, for example here, I will show the grid. Here the bottom right part of this tile has traversable ground and the upper left part has wall ground. Um, and you define that in your tile set by selecting this top left diagonal wall. Um, yeah, and you also have the similar property, ground property available for um, diagonal walls that are in, in deep water. You can try that if you need. Um, yeah, so. So here my hero is kind of sliding diagonally even if I only pressing one of the four main directions and this is really thanks to the diagonal wall property. And here there is a small problem. We forgot in this tile set to, to define this particular tile as diagonal wall. So it's a full wall instead. You can fix this bottom left wall and bottom right wall. And then this should be better. So as you can see, whenever I modify my tile set, it modifies, it has an effect on any existing map that uh, uses this tile set. I don't have to recreate my tiles. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, there are a little bit more of uh, yeah type of oops, grounds like uh, ice, uh, um, spikes, lava. Um, they are, they have some special built-in effect that, like I said, may or may not be to your convenience. And if not, there are some more advanced ways uh, to to do what you need. Um, but you can try that then and see. And finally, I wanted to talk about the empty ground type. Uh, what does it mean? It means actually to um, keep the ground unchanged. So what does it mean? <laughs> Let me first remove these stone. Um, so if I take, for example, this these tiles here, they are all they all have empty ground. Uh, we can check this. Oh, sorry, here. Oh, um, these small plants here, they all have empty ground. And this, the bottom part of this is a wall. So, let's say these ones, they are, they are empty. It means that if you use them, it will simply keep whatever ground was already below. So if I put it here in in grass, which has a traversable, traversable ground, then the ground will remain traversable. And here I'm putting it in shallow water, whose ground is, so it's layer zero, whose ground is shallow water. And we, we will test this, we will see that it, it keeps the behavior of uh, shallow water. And if I put it inside a wall and it will look weird but it will keep the the wall property so this one is still traversable this one is still a wall and where are they these ones are still shallow water cool Okay, now let's remove them. So they are kind of an exception to that rule that I, that I explained in the beginning of this tutorial. And I said that the highest one wins. Uh, the empty ground is a bit special because it actually keeps whatever ground was, was below. And what if there was nothing below? Let's say that uh, this bridge is partially broken here. So there is no 
This is layer 0 and this is layer 1. There is really no tile here. It's completely empty. And as you know, we will just fall on, on the next layer. By the way, if there was no layer below that, we would not fall forever. Uh, yeah, if I remove also the the background tile of the lowest layer, um, I will not fall. <laughs> I will not get out of bounds. Uh, in yeah, I, I will not fall uh, even more. I mean the. To be more precise, layer the lowest layer is always fully traversable by default. And the layer above above that are empty by default. Empty ground. It's a better way to it's a more precise way to, to say it. Okay, so here on layer one I have no tile, so I fall. But if I had if I add uh, some tiles that Oops, I added it to the wrong layer. That have empty ground, like this. Well, I will still fall. Because the ground is empty. That is the main difference between empty ground and traversable ground. Okay, I just fell. Traversable means that you can work on it. I'm, I just changed it to traversable to show you. So when a tile is, tra is traversable, you can work on it and you don't fall. So it's kind of solid ground uh, that can be worked on. But empty just is just really empty. Okay. Uh, let's undo this, keep this empty because that's what we want for these tiles. So this can be used for pure decoration purposes when you don't want to change whatever behavior uh, the tiles below them have. Um, okay, I think we are done about uh, this introduction about grounds. One uh, final note is that not only tiles can modify the ground, but also sometimes dynamic entities can. Um, for example, this bush here is dynamic, which means it can disappear at runtime. So initially it's, it's a wall, but as soon as I take it, uh, there is no wall anymore and I can walk. Um, yeah, some some entities can customize the ground like that and be either wall or traversable or even something else. Um, okay, so I guess that's it for now. Um, thank you all for watching. Please ask any question on our Discord server. And as always, we will be happy to help. Thank you very much. And see you next time. Bye.